commodities and other side it is non agri commodity this slide shows this slides cover various agri commodities uh, such as uh, paper chili turmeric uh, then castor seed there are various agri commodities are being traded on this stock exchanges like uh, in the sp spices sector turmeric cardamom jeera dhania uh, then in uh, uh, oil seed sector soybean oil mustard seed uh, soybean uh, soybean soy complex then mustard complex then in fibers we are having cotton cotton complex kapas cotton seed oil cake cotton uh, in oil seed i have uh, told you that refined refined soy oil refined soy oil and uh, uh, refined soy oil and <clears throat> mustard seed oil here it is um, in non uh, even wheat so in food grains we are having wheat then uh, maize in pulses we are having chana here in non agri commodity uh, non agri commodities we are having diamond then copper aluminium zinc nickel lead crude oil natural gas then financial sector regulator here uh, sebi is uh, regulating the equity as well as commodity derivatives market then banking sector is regulating by rbi then insurance sector is regulating by insurance regulatory and development authority um, then pension is uh, pension fund is regulated by pension fund regulatory and development authority sebi uh, started regulating commodity derivatives market with merger of fmc and sebi on 29 september 2015 here we have a regulatory framework uh, sebi and uh, stock exchanges as well as clearing corporation uh, sebi has uh, three mandates uh, like regulate regulate the securities market protect the interest of investor and promote the development of securities market even we are having the clearing corporation so uh, to function a uh, most uh, critical and most prominent uh, function that is novation so clearing corporation here are mcccl nccl metropolitan clearing corporation then uh, indian clearing corporation by bsc and nsc clearing by nsc so here regu regulation of securities market sebi is regulating the securities market sebi is under very uh, various uh, rules and regulation empower sebi to regulate the securities market so to regulate the secu security market sebi is uh, regulating the stock exchanges permitting the stock exchanges permitting the commodities uh, trading then uh, nominating the commodities for futures uh, futures market then the sebi has a conduct of uh, stock broker uh, under rules and regulation then sebi has a power to corporatization and demutualization of exchange then <clears throat> supersede the business uh, uh, governing uh, governing body of the stock exchanges then <clears throat> then uh, inspect the books of account uh, period uh, checking the periodical inspection of books of account suspension the governing body ban uh, suspension the trading there are various um, uh, powers uh, Uh, various rules laws uh, regulation empower sebi to regulate the securities market ensure the smooth functioning of securities market and uh, check detect the undesirable speculative activity protect the interest of investors sebi has taken number of uh, measures to protect the interest of investor that i am coming to the my disc, that the both the promote and pro protect and promote the development of i'll coming uh, i'll discuss in my succeeding slides here there is a difference between commodity and equity derivatives market as you know that under like commodity derivatives market the first and the prime condition for the commodity derivatives market is the standardized contract and that contract has a expiry date here in equity derivatives market the contracts are perpetual and it is already standardized Underlay, underlying market as you know that spot market is fragmented there is a price opacity we don't know what will be the price of uh, sugar or gur or wheat or rice in in uh, in future course of time and it is for fragmented because the spot market is regulated by the state authorities so different uh, state is <clears throat> regulating the spot market with uh, different rules and regulation that may differ state to state 
here it is organized there is no uh, it is of a national national reach equity derivatives market and price is known everybody everybody known the price what is the reliance share what is a this uh, tata share or birla share or asian paint share and hindustan petrochemical whatever it is uh, with all companies everybody knows the share price of share then here it is underlying supply is estimated and uncertain sometimes the underlying sub, uh, see the in agriculture supply is already uh, supply is a subject of the weather condition so if the weather condition is undesirable unfavor then crop prospect declines if the weather condition is suitable or favor the cross, crop prospect increase so we can't uh, there is no certainty of the uh, supply of agriculture commodities there are always estimation and estimation may in times uh, they they may not comes to or they come uh, sometimes it comes to near nearly it comes to sometimes the estimate uh, may fall here it is certain and available in public domain so participants here are traders brokers fpos farmer here are the retail institutional mutual fund high net worth in investor than foreign eligible entities and category third is uh, uh, category of third third investors these are the various uh, type of investor here it is a highly sophisticated investors uh, uh, trading in the uh, securities market uh, equity market Uh, then price sensitivity is very high here it is medium in the sense that price is sensitivity high suppose the price of sugar or wheat or rice or chana pulses whatever it is a basket of the uh, consumption basket of the masses if the price of that uh, that goods or uh, commodity if the if rises then entire population mass mass will it will be affected to all but in case of uh, share of asian paints or reliance if they in increase or decrease those who have uh, purchased the, those share only they will affect nobody else will affect but in case of uh, com commodity which are the main course of consumption of masses if the, there is some uh, changes in price or fluctuation in price so entire it will affect the entire population of the country sophisticated as i told you here it is very low and here it is very high then derivatives what 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 does it mean so as per the theory it is the, is defined as a financial instruments whose value change in response to change in underlying so what is this what exactly it is mean and why we require this derivatives so simply uh, the it, it is a very simple meaning derivatives are <clears throat> instrument to manage the price risk which in help which in turn help to uh, secure our profitability this is a simple meaning of derivatives it does not have any independent value it offers depend upon the underlying and if the underlying value change the value of derivatives undergo change so derivatives is nothing else it is a device to manage the price risk this is a simple meaning of the derivatives so what type of derivatives are commodity currency stock indices interest rate types of derivative forward future option swap swap i don't want to uh, focus here because uh, sebi is not regulating swap now futures of derivatives contract uh, we can simply uh, so for uh, for to have a uh, clarity on this aspect we just compare it with the otc derivatives and see there are two derivatives one is otc derivatives and one are the exchange traded, traded derivatives otc derivatives uh, may, they do not have any regulation there is no regulation and it is a customized tailor made contract and negotiated between two parties it is uh, these derivatives are traded outside the exchange platform now you take example there are uh, suppose there are um, buyer and seller x and y the x is a farmer and b is a uh, y is a processor suppose x is producing uh, farmer is produce, producing wheat and he is a uh, he has a uh, that uh, floor uh, floor mill he is <clears throat> he purchase wheat from the farmer for uh, utilization in different product now they come into the contract that uh, farmer said to that processor 
that I will supply you wheat after three months, once I get the crop at rupees, suppose 1,000. So processor agree, processor, so they have come into the con uh, negotiation, contract uh, between these two, uh, they negotiated the variety, then uh, uh, date of the contract, then delivery of the contract, where to deliver, in, uh, in how to deliver, everything is negotiated between these two parties. And at the expiry, after three months, farmer has to deliver that uh, one quintal of wheat, suppose take example of one quintal of wheat to that processor. Now you, now you just understand if prices in the market, so what is their price, what price fix in this negotiation, that is rupees 1000. Suppose in the spot market, after three months, price of wheat increases to 2000 or 1500. Farmer, farmer's mind may change because he will, if he sell to a, in the spot market, he will fetch more profit rather than to sell to that uh, processor. So naturally, we ditch that processor and sell the entire is uh, entire one quintal of wheat in market and uh, take the profit. Here, what that wheat processor will do? He doesn't have any uh, uh, any measures to control this or to uh, uh, take pin, uh, some action against that uh, farmer because there is no regulation. To whom he will seek for the uh, action or any penalty or what, whatever default that farmer does, does to him? Nothing. So he will be ditched by that farmer. Now, take some, uh, so vice versa. In case of, suppose, uh, uh, in spot market, suppose uh, after three months, if prices decline in spot market, suppose it is around 700 or 800, what that processor will do? He will not take from farmer. He will not purchase from farmer. He will purchase from outside in the spot market and he, uh, he gain the profit. Why? And farmer doesn't have to do any, uh, any legal action against him because there is no regulation it is negotiated between two parties. It is on the mutual understanding. So when there is a mutual, mutual understanding, when contract is based on the mutual understanding, there are the largest possibility of default. So such OTC derivatives are forward and swap. Now exchange traded derivatives. Now you come on the uh, contract which are being traded at the exchange level. These contracts are more secured than this OTC derivatives, because these are the standardized contract traded on the stock exchange platform and weighted by the SEBI. Here there is default risk is negligible because there is a clearing corporation who function, who interposes between the buyer and seller. So he becomes buyer for seller and seller for buyer. So such default is minimized on the exchange traded derivatives. So I will, uh, in detail, I will come to my next slide, succeeding slide. So exchange traded derivatives are more regulated, more secured than this OTC derivatives contract. Because here the, they guarantee the performance of the contract. Here there is no guarantee for the performance of the contract. So such exchange traded derivatives are futures and options. Now why we require these derivatives? Derivatives are required for price discovery and price management, price risk management. What is price risk? That is a possibility of deviation from expected outcome because you don't know what will be the price tomorrow. Suppose I anticipate price prices will be rising in future. And in, in future, if, if it falls, then it is against my expectation. So naturally, if I say that no prices will be falling in future, no price will fall. And suppose if it is rise, then again it is against my anticipation about the reading of the prices. Now there is a price risk because of this. Because when there is a price risk, then how to mitigate that price risk? See, in these derivatives, uh, commodity derivatives market, there are the participants who are playing in this commodity derivatives market. There are hedges. Who are the hedges? Farmer, FPOs, importer, exporter, manufacturer, processor, stockies. These are the hedgers. Why we are calling them hedger? Because they actually hold a physical stock. They have in possession 
in their possession the physical stock and there is a other side other side of market which covers speculator arbitrager who does not have any physical stock but they are willing to take a price risk then how this market operates one one part of uh, one one side of the market are the hedger and one side of the market are different participant this one type of market who are hedger they are what is their uh, what is their fear that price may rise or price may fall so when when they have fear that price may rise or fall who take the risk to safeguard safeguard the interest of those hedger there are speculators we and because and therefore that they are transfer this price risk to speculator then we have to understand what is the role of speculator and how they how they take the risk how they shoulder this risk so speculator or arbitrage they are not any ordinary uh, ordinary players they are in theory also they are tell, they are addressed as the most eminent players and most crucial players because they have they should understand so to their they have to shoulder the price risk for shouldering this price risk they have a different they have some abilities some capacity on based on that capacity they are taking the price risk now which are those capacity which is uh, what is this role of speculator and why we are calling them a speculator because or arbitrages you take the example of arb arbitrage also how they take the risk speculator is not the ordinary person he he should know he has a capacity to understand the market phenomena and the intrinsic factors governing this demand and supply so why the when i say the price risk why this price risk arise uh, <clears throat> price risk arises due to unbalance in the fundamental so this price risk is very very uh, very very much uh, we can say a relative aspect of demand and supply when there is any imbalance between demand and supply price change so risk arises so what is this role of speculator to understand these fundamentals to understand the intrinsic factors governing this demand and supply and he should have a capacity to have the intelligent appraisal of this market condition and also ability to forecast the future course of uh, future course of prices in some uh, kind of accuracy some uh, some kind of accuracy so the role of speculator is very crucial because it because it helps hedger by taking the price risk so for taking the price risk speculator should have the knowledge of fundamentals the market fundamentals fundamentals mark <clears throat> the demand and supply factors governing this demand and supply so this is the role of speculator then benefits of commodity uh, derivatives trading price discovery price risk management elimination of counter i am coming to that do, uh, first two points uh, elimination of counterparty creditors that i told you that clearing corporation who who has a very crucial functions and playing a very very significant role in commodity derivatives market we will understand its function in my later slide then access to all type of market participant so the person who is sitting at chennai and person who is sitting at mumbai they see the same uh, trading screen there is no cost there is no hidden cost of this uh, this screen and all the transactions are similar for all the participant so it is a it is a actual uh, benefit for the players players who is uh, trading on this stock exchange platform there is no hidden cost the person who is sitting at mumbai will see the same trading screen that what per <clears throat> the person who is sitting at the same trading screen the person who is sitting elsewhere in country now these are the standardized product this, there is there should not be heterogeneity in the product the product can be standardized product has a similar characteristic so we can have we can standard or we can say the in case of agri commodities we we have a faq variety when we consider a, pers a variety when we consider a good or commodity of a faq variety that means it is a general variety means there is not the element of any superior or inferior it is a faq variety fair average quality variety 
Why I'm telling that? Because the prices of these fair average quality varieties are considered as a gen, uh, which influence, or rather, we, I can say it is influence the general price trend. Means it, if it is at a high level, then it shows you the high prices. If it is at a low level, it shows you at a very prices at a very low level. You may not so with this difference, you are not able to gain the price discovery. So for gaining the price discovery, our first aspect price discovery, you should have a standardized product. Transparent trading platform, I, as I told you, it is very transparent. And transparent, everybody can see there is no hidden cost. All the transactions uh, charges are similar. There is a, when I say the transparent, it, it hidden meaning is that there is information symmetry. That all participants in this process, they are having the same information. There is no any manipulative attempt. So that, that is a basic characteristic of this transparent trading platform. So now I'm moving to the price discovery. So in price discovery, I can uh, give you a good example to understand this price discoveries. So <clears throat> there are always two market existed. One can be seen visually and one is a hidden market. That hidden market is called a dynamic market. When I'm saying commodity derivatives trading or commodity derivatives market, it is a hidden market because it itself derived its value from the underlying market. Now, when I'm saying that this uh, two market, one is a normal market. So normal market is a ready market. And the dynamic market is a our, our commodity derivative market. That is a stock exchange platform. I can say enough, so I have to you to have a more clarity. It is a stock exchange platform. So when I'm saying that commodity derivatives, like, like spot market. Spot market means suppose if I go to a vendor, fruit vendor, I purchase some uh, 1 kg of apple. He told me that 180 rupees uh, for 1 kg. I, I'll try to negotiate something. So, okay, he, told, he will tell me, okay, you take at 175. So, this is a spot market where delivery can happen instantly. That you pay the price, you take the delivery. Sometimes there may not be any, you cannot uh, attempt for negotiation also. So whatever vendors say, you have to give the, uh, give that, that much amount of cost and take the delivery. So this is a spot market. When I'm saying dynamic market means what? It is a hidden market and it just depend upon the spot market. And when, but how it evolved? This hidden market is evolved. It is based on the perfect, perfect competition doctoring. What does it say? It is saying that in this market, there are large number of buyers and sellers. There is a price volatility, easy entry and exist, large demand and supply, and information symmetry. So in such dynamic market, there is an information symmetry. Every participant in this market get the same information. There is no hidden information or ever uh, over emphasis, nothing of that sort. Whatever demand supply, whatever governing factors, what would be the uh, stock position, what would be the weather estimates, everything, every participant in the market knows all this information. So when such, when all the participants existed in the market, having everything that information symmetry, very easy entry and exist. Everything is similar. Everything is planned. So in such market, there are large number of buyer and seller. They are bidding for the, uh, <clears throat> they are bidding for the prices. Supply on the one side or demand buyer, seller on the one side from supply side and demand buyer on the de demand side. They are, <clears throat> playing for the price they are uh, fix, uh, they are bidding transacting give buying and taking for one price so how this price emerge the price is emerge when the force of seller and on one side and on one side the force of buyer they come together and interact between each other for, for setting a equilibrium to evolve a price 
so that price where seller are willing to sell and the same price when buyers are willing to buy so that price when supply meets the demand in the intersection between supply and demand we get the equilibrium price so this is a real time price and this is called price discovery so when suppliers and buyers coming together they are bidding for the price and the price emerged from their bidding their competitive bidding why i say competitive because there are large number of seller there is not any only one seller or only one buyer to dominate the market if there is only one seller or group of seller or we can say a cartel then there is a dictatorship in the market when there is one buyer or a group of that we can say a, a cartel then there is a dictatorship of buyer so if there is a dictatorship of seller buyer has to obey their dictatorship and if there is a dictatorship of buyer seller has to obey what they are quoting uh, for the price but in mar in such market there are no dictatorship because in perfect competition market there is no cartel there are large number of seller bidding for one price large number of buyer bidding for one price so that price which emerged between these two uh, transaction that is a real time price and that is real time price discovery real real price which which depends upon which determines the market forces of demand and supply so that price is a reflection of market forces of demand supply therefore it is real so such stock exchange when trading takes place on the stock exchange they are discovering the real real price which reflect the actual supply and demand forces so there is no manipulation no, no element of manipulation now price discovery as i told you what this price discovery what is the function of this price discovery it enhances the bargaining power of the farmer it enhances the negotiation deals of the farmer so it can facilitate facilitate to reduce domination of the commission agent this price discovery how it reach reach <coughs> farmers with the price alerts through sms so five, these are the disseminate the exchanges are disseminate this price signal or price alert through sms to farmer so farmer farmer will come to know what is the price in near future or what is the price prevailing at at present time what is the future price prevailing at this at this juncture so farmer farmer come come means farmer get the idea and now he will it will enhance his bargaining power <clears throat> it empowers him to negotiate the better deals with the uh, with the middleman then it reduce the uh, it reduce the dominance of commission agent or middleman this helps to reduce the dominance of commission agent and middleman and he farmer save himself from being cheated or corner by middleman so this is middleman or commission agent this is a main uh, <coughs> main function of the price discovery then we move to the price risk management what is the price risk management and how it takes place so in as i as i told you the hedger so price risk price risk management takes place through hedging then what is what is meant by hedging so hedging means taking a position in future market that is opposite to already existing position in spot market it reduce or limit the risk associated with the unpredictable price change objective behind this objective behind this mechanism is to offset offset loss in one market by gaining others now i will just give a small example of it so when at the time when when farmers when sowing takes place at that time farmer lock his price and he has to just forget forget about everything how i why why i want to say that once he lock the price there is no need to worry in suppose if if he doesn't lock the price what will happen at the time of uh, harvest price falls so when price fall farmer has to suffer losses and he, and he uh, caught 
in the vicious circle and then he go for a distress sale so this is ultimate then he uh, then he uh, uh, nobody can save him he has to born in poverty and he die he, he, he will die in poverty this is the scenario so to overcome this scenario what he will do he will lock, lock the price how he lock the price with the help of hedging what this hedging tools now as as i told you the definition of it that you have to uh, take the position in future market that is derivatives market which is opposite to already you are you are in the ready market now farmer is in ready market what farmer role he is a seller so he has to take a short open position in future market so when price fall in the ready market future also falls why future also fall because it derives its value from the ready market it doesn't have any independent value it is actually mirror of the ready market so when ready falls future also fall at that time he will cover his position by buying the future contract he he entered as a seller at the time of expiry he will buy the future contract so he will when he will buy by at the time of expiry when he is buying the future contract here price fall in future in future market also price fall so when he is buying at a low price so whatever loss he occurred in the future not being hedged now that is recovered in the future so as as i say as i said you the objective behind behind this hedging mechanism is, is to offset the loss in one market by gaining another suppose take example suppose uh, uh, he is growing com x commodity and he lock his price suppose the pr price of that commodity is 100 rupees so he lock his commodity lock his price in future market at 1, 120 now price fall suppose price fall to 80 rupees in ready market suppose if he had not been hedge in the future he has to come across to that 20 rupees loss but here also future when ready falls future also fall future also fall at 100 rupees so loss of 20 rupees in ready market he will gain in future so in this way this hedging takes place this hedging mechanism work it is nothing else but to acquire or to have a opposite position future what what does it mean you have to get acquire the opposite position in the future market which is opposite to ready you have to take future position which is opposite to ready suppose if you are buyer in the future uh, ready market you have to sell at the time of when you are anticipating that prices will rise and you will suffer a loss but when you purchase take a purchase position in the future market at the time of expiry what you will take what you will do you will sell that contract at what time you will sell at higher prices so ultimately in ready market if you suffer a losses because of rising prices you will gain from future so whatever loss occurred in the ready market you will gain by in future so these are the exchanges uh, these are the okay i'll, I'll come back national uh, we have a four stock exchanges three to half we have a five stock exchanges ncdx mcx bsc nsc and indian commodity exchanges then commodities being traded on the stock exchanges just uh, have a look here we have uh, actually now now we have 49 commodities are trading are being tra are being traded on the stock exchanges these are some of them all these commodities uh, included in this slide this is the agri commodities ncdx has a lion share in agri commodities mcx are these are the non agri commodities mcx has a lion share in non agri commodities then suitability criteria for futures trading now there are a number of uh, a number of measures or number of uh, parameters to judge which commodity uh, the uh, suitability of the commodity for futures trading 
first of all the main uh, main criteria for uh, futures trading are the, this is i already told you this is a this this is based on the perfect competition so when i say it is based on the perfect competition means the like the, the size of the market is very large that is large demand and supply homogeneity and standardization as i told you earlier then the shelf life of the commodity should should be large enough then information symmetry should be there then global why is it trade factor global because as when if it is traded at globally we will get the major points of the price discovery then value chain participant the larger the value chain larger the <coughs> demand for that commodity or larger the demand for that commodity for larger the <coughs> suitability for that commodity for futures trading geographical area coverage we can see in the in in form of distribution as well as production so when i'm saying that distribution because it will give the higher coverage when it is covered at a larger scale means it should not be uh, confined to a very limited geographical area so geographical coverage higher the geographical coverage more the com commodity conducive for future trading there should not be applicability of laws there should not be plethora of laws so if there is a large uh, large law regulated uh, commodity over the regulation on that commodity then the commodity the suitability is 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 literally we are facing we may face lot of problems for that so take the example of even in case of price control commodity should be free in terms of price control or supply uh, supply management there should be free supply more price will it if you take the example of petrol and diesel this commodity are not suitable for future trading because this this both the commodities are not free politically sensitive there is a price control it is not freely available it is not traded in the open market there have uh, <clears throat> limited you have the license for trading uh, even the petrol diesel can only be sold on the petrol pump no buyer no seller or buyer can sell in between between them or any negotiated price and supply everything so the petrol diesel will not will not be consider means they, they are not suitable for future study you know they are control in terms of many many param parameters take the example of supply price moment of commodities and so on correlation the commodities if commodity is highly correlated so we have the international factors will also come in picture and we have to see whether the international demand supply affects the commodity seasonality as you know the it is the most uh, significant feature for suitability of commodity commodity if it commodity is signal then it is seasonal then it is uh, more suitable conducive for future trading price volatility should be there if prices are more more volatile then people uh, if they the commodities are vulnerable to the price risk then naturally uh, those commodities are suitable for the future trading then the key parameters as i told you the standardized contract so these are the in first slide i show you the the when i say the contract these are not a mutually understand these are the contracts prescribed by the uh, by the stock exchanges and weighted by the regulator so these are the standardized contract no one can alter these terms and conditions the basis center uh, basis variety these are more crucial parameter like time of commencement of trading maturity of trading so why i'm stressing on this point because basis center or base, basis center should be that it should be a even you take the additional delivery center those center uh, should be chosen in a such a way that we have to see that maximum supply available on this center there should not be negligible supply or insignificant supply or low supply or no in uh, in a good uh, in <clears throat> for a better understanding we can say that these are the producing as well as trading as well as consumption as well as distribution of of that commodities means the there there are the larger buying and selling activity should be prevailing in this commodity in these centers there should have a proper infrastructure for giving taking delivery transportation storage 
only those center can be chosen as a basis as well as temporary uh, additional delivery center. Basis variety, I, I already told you that it should reflect the general price trend. It should not be a premium variety or an inferior variety. So in that case, the price discovery may not happen properly. So the basis variety, and you have a tender. Suppose if you if you uh, if you fix or tenderable variety at a premium level, you can at a higher or superior tender, you can get the premium more that over the basis variety. So that doesn't have uh, much uh, significance, but the basis variety should be a reflective have a reflective general price trend. Then you have the time of commencement of trading as well as my, this is the most crucial maturity maturity date because when you set the time for commencement or maturity date, you have to ensure that there is an adequate supply in the market so that the supply should not corner or the seller should not have a fear that he, uh, his, sup, uh, his supply will be, he will be cornered. Because he always has a fear that his supply will be gone. So, so you have to decide the time of commencement and time of maturity in a, such a way that there should be the market is flooded with the supply. There should be abundant supply available in the market. So contract should be broad enough to enable the seller to sell freely in the market. So they should not have, uh, have a, uh, to fear for a seller that is supply being cornered. So that much broad, or it should not be more broad that buyer may confuse or it drive away from the market. So contract should be, we have to frame a contract in a such a way that it should be liquid and capable of rendering services expected from it. So broad means there should not be too much delivery center. If there is a too much delivery center, a large number of delivery centers, so buyer will get confused. He may not know from where he will get the <coughs> delivery or you should not select that uh, this uh, additional delivery center should a uh, most trading hub. Large number of delivery giving taking should take place in that center. If there is a negligible or there is a dormant delivery center, then there is a no use. So you have to better to avoid it. So before framing all this contract specification, you have to survey to the spot market, you have you have to do an exhaustive survey over the spot market because I already so I already told you that future contract is akin to the spot market. It's a mirror of the spot market. So whatever practices uh, procedure is going going in the spot market, that should be a replica in the future market. So it is nothing else but replica of the spot market. So limit on open position and this is a risk uh, perspective measure that is uh, depend upon the supply and the, all the margin has uh, been prescribed, taking uh, based on the past track record or historical price data, based on that, this margin have been set up. Now the heroes of the commodity derivatives market, stock exchange, clearing corporation and repository. The key feature of stock exchange, you already, all, all of you know that it is a auto automated screen-based trading having a national, national reach, then um, order driven trading system, real time information, everybody is getting the real time and uh, online and it's an online platform and we are getting the real time information. Clearing corporation, uh, the first and the prime, uh, uh, prime function of this clearing corporation is innovation, then uh, monitoring the uh, positions, then collect the different types of margin, compute the margin, pay in, pay out, ensure uh, smooth uh, <coughs> running the pay in, pay out obligation. Then arrange the de delivery. If there is a delivery obligation, then you have to arrange the delivery obligation, day to day collection of margin. These are all uh, uh, and one thing foremost, daily clearings, clearing and settlement, innovation, as I told you. These are the main uh, functions of this clearing corporation. Repository is set up to only help the farmer. Uh, these are uh, for uh, pledge financing. The ENWRA issued by this repository 
can pledge hypothetically in the banks and get the credit, get the loan. And this is only a benefit of the means from the farmer's perspective, it is, uh, it is uh, form set up and it is being regulated by WDRA. Now, everybody know WDRA, uh, as I told you, then uh, warehouse service provider is a main uh, functionary in, the, in this derivatives market. The basic, uh, fun uh, the most prominent fun function of WD, uh, this WDRA and WSP is ensure the quality, quantity, integrity, and good delivery. This is the basic function of it. Now, the WSP has a different, uh, different rules and regulation based on that WS, uh, WSP has, has to operate. It, has, it should have the capital network. For 10 crores for one commodity and 25 crores for uh, one, one, one uh, means more than one commodity should have then uh, clear. <laughs> we have even Sebi has uh, framed the SOP for WSP under which he has to function. Then he should have no your depositor uh, he has to complied with the no no your depositor criteria, capital network as as already told you. Then there should not be any conflict conflict of interest. Means the managerial of WSP should not have managerial or the key personnel of WSP should not have any trade should not have any uh, trading interest. Means he cannot trade to those commodities which has already have a function of WSP. Means who are uh, <coughs> they have. They are functional uh, for the the uh, uh, accredited commodities or goods in their warehouses. Then quality assessor, there is a one national national uh, uh, NABL National Accreditation Board for uh, calibration and testing laboratories. All the assaying can be done through this uh, accredited uh, labor accredited laboratories who have a certificate of. NABL, NABL, then price polling agency, as you know, that we are, we require the prices for uh, determine our basis as well as, uh, it, excuse me, lecture is there. Okay. Okay. So price pooling agency, the main function of the price pooling agency, as all of you know, we require the basis. Uh, we require the spot price for uh, for fixing the basis. Then where with the price dissemination, participant will know how much uh, uh, quantango and backwardation uh, built in the future prices. So to take the direct trade, uh, so to facilitate them for trade, taking the trading the trading decision, as well as for F FSP is the main uh, main uh, crucial factor. It is once again determination of F FSP is once again based on the spot prices. So spot prices should be uh, very transparent and should not have any element eliminate of uh, any manipulation. So the strengthening of spot prices uh, polling process. Is a major. Uh, it is a major criteria uh, for the stock exchanges. Ma major function of the stock exchanges. Then we uh, the the stock exchanges has a review uh, of this polling uh, polling agency. So they detect the which are the prices. Who are the uh, polling the unrealistic prices? They put it. Uh, they put a like uh, they um, uh, do the watchdog functions uh, for this uh, price polling pattern. And if they come to know they, these are the unrealistic prices, some uh, polling agents are uh, giving polling the unrealistic prices, they will remove those polling agents. So price polling agency should be strengthened. And uh, they have uh, while reviewing, they come to know that who are the active or inactive agent, agent or price price polling agency, they will remove those inactive and only active price polling, uh, polling agent they can keep with them. So farmer producer organization, as a, as you know that farmer, uh, they increase the uh, strengthen the bargaining power of the farmer and enable them to have the economies of scale, benefit of the economies of scale. 
so this is the recent i as i told you in the my first uh, first slide these are the recent initiative taken by sebi to promote the commodity derivatives market so we have having the category 3 invest alternative investment fund here then mutual fund uh, eligible foreign entities portfolio managers for commodity derivatives we have permitted option in goods then future permitted future on commodity indices then warehousing norms we have uh, uh, we have revised integration of commodity and stock broking agents have been done and prescribe cyber security norms in align in alignment with the equity market these are the initiative taken by the sebi for developing the commodity market then there is always misconception about trading in commodity derivatives market these are dominated by the speculator just like and just like gambling so this is far from satisfactory as all of you know the role of speculator as i already told you it is enlightened it is a quite enlightened and the speculator who are taking the risk which is already existing but gambler who are creating the risk so there is a vast different difference between the speculator and gambler it is prone to manipulation it is far from satisfactory because we have taken number of measures to detect the manipulation no assurance of quality as i already told you that a share should have a certificate certificate of assaying from nabl that is national uh, national accreditation board for calibration and <clears throat> and testing laboratories suitable so it is not true that because we are a series all always uh, they have to undergo all these regulatory parameters if it is they are complying with those regulatory parameters then only they are permitted as a assayer and they should have a certificate of nabl and suitable only so this is far from uh, satisfactory because we are also having small trading lot in case of uh, non agri contracts we are having the small trading lot in gold as well as silver and other metals now sebi's uh, other initiative for for com promoting commodity derivatives market we are having score here score system here so everything is uh, in <coughs> given in detail on this sebi portal if you have a complaint then you have to first approach the intermediary if you are not satisfactory with their resolution then you launch the complaint on score so it is a electronic mode of platform for lodging complaint it is launch on its everything is written here so you can they they, they will give a uh, unique client code unique number client number so from that number you can track the process uh, and pro, uh, track the progress and status of your complaint with that complaint registration number it is available 24 by 7 so now we move to the safe investing do's and don'ts first you have to trade only with sebi registered member no other member you have to first check whether the member is registered with sebi or not if it is not registered with sebi so you don't trade with him insist on risk disclosure document this is the most crucial uh, parameters uh, under this uh, safe investing what is this risk disclosure document it shows you it gives you understanding or knowledge the risk involved in derivatives trading so the person who is having the low in uh, low risk appetite limited resources limited investment they should first understand before entering into the derivatives contract they should most careful and first understand what exactly it is so those are, because this derivatives contract which has a very varying element of risk may not be suitable for such person so when you trade on this contract the onus is on yours so you may not take a plea that uh, risk disclosure uh, adequate dis risk disclosure has not been told by the member or the exchange so you cannot you cannot say like that so th therefore you have to understand risk disclosure document very very carefully so because uh, in the light of risk involved in this derivatives trading first to under undertake the transaction before undertake the transaction you have to understand the nature of contractual relationship in which you are entering 
and exposure and your exposure to the risk because this derivatives contract may not give you guarantee of profit nor acceptance of losses so the onus is on yours so before entering into this derivatives contract you have to carefully understand this market carefully understand the commodities the other risk are the risks are there are lot of risk here low liquidity risk high volatility risk then uh, uh, if you are not uh, there is always unpredictable changes in the prices so there may be the margin default or position breaches or delivery default there are such type of risk involved in this always be compliant with kyc norms where you are giving all information about uh, in kyc norms everything is written that what is your uh, buy position sell position order date trade date trade details then brokerage then various uh, various tax obligation as well as the most crucial that is a arbitration clause always be compliant with your kyc norms so once you have to after risk disclosure you have to um, you have to do compliance with your kyc norms and you will get the unique client code so this unique client code will also important because otherwise if you don't get that you won't enter into trading law trading platform you can't trade and this ucc is very important because it will link to your pan card so with pan card you will come to know to whom you have acquired the position to whom uh, you are trading there are number of members you can uh, open account so that it is very essential for you to understand from which member to from whom you are acquire how much position and always insist to provide you a contract note then you have a cross genuine cross check facility also so these are the do's and don'ts uh, in don'ts uh, there are uh, you should not uh, carried away by alluring advertisement as all, all of you know don't accept any duplicate or unsigned contract note don't let the risk against your position accumulate beyond uh, your capacity these are all don'ts and uh, before that i would i would like to tell you it is also written here don't indulge in dabba trading dabba trading means that which is outside the exchange platform if you indulge in dabba trading you will not get any advantage of legal trading member legal client member in the legal client member you have the facility of score that i have already told you we have shown you in the slide then you have the arbitration this is the most uh, important if you have any uh, complaints or dispute with your member broker member you can always come to uh, take the uh, help of the score you can approach the approach sebi as well as your intermediary so these are the many many facilities of being a registered member or trading through the uh, legal uh, legal platform don't go for a dabba trading because you will deprived of all these facilities you may not get the client <clears throat> you may not get the contract note you may not get the trade ver verification facility no arbitration no dispute resol resolution you may not get all these facilities if you indulge in dabba trading and if you occur the losses don't you unable you will unable to launch your complaint uh, in the in the score web, website so these are all uh, do's and don'ts so uh, before entering into the contract take account all this thing take caution uh, and try to understand more and more futures trading economics of the commodity because it is a very sophisticated device a layman may not possess all such knowledge if if you take the single commodity and it does not have a liquidity then it is very difficult to unwind the position so you will be you will be the defaulter and you have to penalize so but before you enter as i told you you have to first understand the economics of the commodity go through the past track record as well as insist your risk disclosure document try to understand that risk different risks involved in this commodity derivatives accustomed to it try to get the more and more knowledge and then only entered in the derivatives platform so with this i want to end my presentation thank you hello hello yes ma'am yes ma'am hello ma'am 
Many, many thanks for patient listening. I, any uh, any uh, questions? No, ma'am, there are no questions. Okay, then shall we? Session. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank thanks you, a lot. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Upalini, how many members are there? Who are, how many people are there? 